five grand. We made five thousand dollars, and it wasn't even for one of you good ones. Don't you mean one of your good ones? No, 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 no. All right, our, one of our good ones. Well, what about honesty? Oh, come on, the painting says keen. I'm keen. And that's a clip from Big Eyes. I'm delighted to say that Tim Burton uh, has joined us. Hello, Tim. How are you, sir? Merry Christmas. Well, a Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> I imagine if you've got a movie coming... What well, the great thing about having a movie that's coming out just before Christmas is you've got the perfect ex- excuse for not actually doing anything, not buying anything, not decorating anything. Is, yeah. is this I the case? I always, when a movie comes out... Well, I usually like to leave the planet when the uh, movie comes out, so <laughs> it'll be quite difficult, but... Um, yeah, no, I, I go into a weird cocoon, so it doesn't, yeah, it, it helps with Christmas. I can just sort of hibernate. And, wh- and why do you like to leave the planet when a movie comes out? I don't know. I just always feel a bit vulnerable. I mean, I feel a bit, I don't, I don't know. It's, 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 it's just a strange, my own peculiarity, I guess, that uh, it just, uh, I wish I could be one of those directors that, that sits in the front row and looks back and watches the audience really enjoy the movie, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, it can be going well, and I think it's, you know, it, it's the worst thing ever. So I, I have an out-of-body experience when I sit through one of my own films. I'm sure others do as well. So would this be sort of at the premiere, or would this be just any kind of screening, or are you just not looking forward yeah. to any of it? No, no, I mean, I, I, I love doing it, and I love finishing it. I love, you know, I, 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 you know, it's not that I don't love it. It's just I socially haven't yet been able to learn how to, you know, deal with them. Normal society. <laughs> okay. Well, now, t- so tell us, which we'll talk about more in a bit, but tell us about Margaret and Walter Keane, who are the couple at the at the heart of your story, played by uh, Amy Adams and Christoph Waltz. Just uh, just tell, tell us this story, because I'm, I'm aware that it's a true story, but I was not aware of any of the facts at all. Well, I mean, it, f- it first started growing up. It was kind of like what I call suburban art that was very present in the culture I grew up in. It was in people's living rooms, doctor's office, dentist's office. It was like these eyes staring at you, this big brother-like kind of thing. And, and, and I remember it's like certain things from childhood leave you, but this image of these paintings stayed with me for a long period of time. And it wasn't until like the mid-90s when I learned the real story, which was the fact that up until that point, I thought that Walter Keane was the painter. And uh, even though it had been documented in, in newspapers and things, but it sort of flew under the radar. And then when I learned the real story about it, it just... You know, it it was like Ed Wood in the sense is like it was so unbelievable. It's like so this weird dysfunctional couple, you know, got together and created these strange mutant children. And so it's a real story, but it also sounded like kind of like a horror movie at the same time. Yes. But, you know, a real horror movie. So Mar- and Margaret is the artist. She's the one that's painting these extraordinary children with the huge big eyes. Um, mm. Walter is kind of a huckster. Yes. Yeah, but he was like really, I mean, as much as people might, you know, first of all, think the art was kitsch and all of this and that he was some kind of maniac. I mean, he was sort of at the forefront of, you know, printing of, of art and opening a gallery and, a, and a sort of sort of marketing that sort of become much more commonplace now. So, you know, he had a certain thing that, that he really brought to the table. I think if it w- hadn't been for him, I mean, Margaret w- would have never really seen anything, potentially. So it's, uh, they were, they, they had a weird balancing or a weird dysfunctional connection that made one thing sort of big. There's a sort of a, spl- a splendid sort of distancing as to whether the art is any good. Uh, or not. And I do enjoy yeah. uh, Terence Stamp playing the New York Times art critic who describes it as being a, um, uh, an infinity of kitsch. Was that, is that the line that he has? I mean, I think... Well, yeah, no, but I mean, I think this was all from a real, you know, the real uh, uh, you know, reviews of, of the work. And uh, that's why, you know, I tried to represent because I had the same feeling. I mean, I'd look at the art as a child and go, what are these images of children, you know? And it's like, you know, why is the grown people have this stuff hanging in their, you know, living rooms, you know? And uh, so I had that same kind of feeling. And it, it was such a polarization of how people, obviously a lot of people thought it was kitsch. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people wanted to rip it off the walls. And I think that's why you didn't really hear so much about it in terms of the story, because it wasn't considered, it mainly considered art. So it didn't sort of, it sort of flew under the radar of, of, of stories 
And uh, but I think that's a big question. That's why I love doing Ed Wood. And I mean, I've experienced myself a lot. I mean, I remember when I had the MoMA show in New. They had this MoMA show in New York with my stuff, and it got completely panned by critics, probably worse than Keen. And yet at the same time, it had a good, ama- amazing attendance uh, record. So, so this sort of ba- this sort of thing of like this is, or and at the same time, some people like it. You know, it's something I've uh, kind of experienced. You know, my whole life. Yeah, so yeah. I, I got that kind of thing. <laughs> so, so, so the key thing here is also not just whether it's kitsch or not, but uh, as mm. uh, is 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 referenced a number of times in the movie, this is women's art, and as Margaret says, you know, no one likes ladies' art, and so this is the sort of the background at the end of the fifties, early sixties, where it's genuinely felt felt as though women painting, no one's going to buy it. Well, in general, I mean, obviously, she mentioned Georgie O'Keeffe. I mean, there are obviously major women artists and stuff, but uh, I mean. Given at least in the sort of culture I grew up in in the late fifties, early sixties, I mean, that whole sort of you know it's it's obviously changed now. But I do recall at the time it's like most women didn't work, at least the ones I knew, you know, and 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 a certain kind of suburban environment. And uh, I know, I think Walter obviously sort of you, you know sort of presented it this way himself, and uh, you, you know was kind kind of had his tactics with her as well. But um, yeah, it was definitely you know I I do remember it and uh, and it, it's hard to believe now it's like hard life before cell phones you know it's like this it, it was different. Can you tell us something about working with Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski because obviously they you know they wrote Ed Wood they have a, a phenomenal ability to take the the real <laughs> life strange stories of people and turn them into you know uh, accessible movie scripts into a similar thing with the People versus Larry Flint. What mm. are they like to work with? Do you feel very close to them? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, they've written other kinds of things, but I think for me, that's their forte. I mean, they, 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 and it was weird is, is that, you know, I didn't know Scott and Larry were writing the script, but I had my own sort of parallel universe where I was told a story about the mid nineties and, uh, and, and, and I was in, then went to San Francisco and met Margaret and commissioned a painting from her. And so this was long before there was a project and then sort of got wind that Scott and Larry had written a, a script based on it, knowing that their fascination with these kind of stories, you know, uh, it made sense to me. And uh, you know, similarities in the sense of what's good and bad. And, and uh, I mean, in fact, you know, it, it's it's like what we read about, like there's a court scene in, in the film and people think it sort of goes way over the top and we actually toned it down, you know. And the most, I mean, he, it's a great performance from Christoph Voss, but he's the most maddening and infuriating and uh, extraordinary man all at the same time. Well, that's what he does so well. I mean, in this particular case, Walter, if you know, in reading about him, what Margaret said, I mean, he was a mixture of all those things. I mean, he was charming, he was funny, he was a womanizer, he was have horrible temper, bullying, scary, you know, dark... Um, you know, but also had something to really awe. You know, the whole thing I said about printing and, and, and the, you know, a bit of ahead of his time in a way. Uh, we should uh, we should mention, Tim, that uh, you talked about Margaret Keane, who is actually in the movie. So she's played by Amy Adams. Uh, Walter Keane died in 2000, I think we mm. we learn at the end. But she actually, mm-hmm. did she take much persuading to actually appear? No, she's a very, she's probably one of the shyest people I've ever met, you know, very, very reserved, very internal. So it's amazing. A, I mean, I, I must have thought it just must be really weird to be watched a movie, you know, based on you, especially given the sort of private nature of, of her. So, um, but, you know, I think Scott and Larry did, you know, t- talked her through the script a lot. And, uh, no, she was very open about it. I think she felt comfortable. And she'd met me, like I said, long before there was even a project. So we had some kind of connection. And, uh, Were you commissioned you know, smile for yeah, I did. I, I like in my mid nineties. I went and visited her in her studio, and uh, you know that's when I first got to know her a little bit. And I didn't. It was even a couple of years later when I knew that Scott and Larry were actually did a script based on it. So it was a weird sort of parallel universe going on at that time. On a very brief uh, festive note, can you just solve an argument for me? I, go, I keep getting asked, you know, a list of 10 favourite Christmas films, and I always put Nightmare Before Christmas in there, and I'm always told yeah. it's not a Christmas film, it's a right. Halloween film, because that's when it gets yeah. really... Far, just, it is a Christmas film, yeah. isn't it? Yes. I mean, for me, I mean, if you come over to my house, you have The Nightmare Before Christmas by way of Tokyo, because I we put stuff on our tree that's got all sorts of monsters and a few decorations and some Japanese monsters. And uh, so I like to let the Halloween through Christmas season 
Just to be clear, Simon, I think, I think Tim Burton just invited us to his house for Christmas. That, that was what you said, wasn't it, Tim? Sure, yeah, and right. I think, I mean, <laughs> it, do, it does sound as though yeah, Christmas in Tim your Burton... Own, uh, yeah. It sounds as though Christmas in your house is exactly the way people would expect Christmas in Tim Burton's house to be. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. yeah it's possible. Yeah, I'll put a few keen paintings up. and No, I do have a few keen paintings. So, yeah, it's, it's got it all. That's great. We're coming. We'll see you Christmas morning. Okay. <laughs> Tim, he, th- he thinks we're joking, yeah, but yeah, we're yeah, not. We'll no, I know. Well, you guys can go there. I won't be there, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a key. Thanks. Uh, Tim Burton, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed, sir. All right, guys. Thank, thank you.